So what if I told you you can make your MacBook Pro touchscreen with just one accessory? Let's ramble. Hold up. Face go up when I pull up. They all on me like a once. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. Right, so if you've been to this channel before, you know I'm an avid Apple user, and I absolutely love working on iPads. I love how portable they are and how versatile they are. There are so many use cases for an iPad. And because I run this tech channel, I'm lucky enough to own several iPads in different sizes, so I get to enjoy them for different purposes, and they're a lot of fun. Having said that, whenever I need to do long work sessions with a lot of multitasking, or I need to edit my videos, I always revert back to using my MacBook Pro. I recently got the fully specced out 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro and it's a fantastic machine. It's an absolute powerhouse and it cuts right through heavy 4K editing timelines like butter. Now I went for the 14 inch because I love how portable it is. It feels light on my lap and it's perfect for coffee shops as well as airplane seats. But when it comes to editing or whenever I need a lot of windows open for longer work sessions, I often find myself using portable external displays. The problem with those is that they're often flimsy, no name displays from Amazon, and ultimately they all seem to crap out on me. The other thing is, and that's probably because I use my iPad so much, is that I find myself sitting in a coffee shop, tapping the display, looking like an idiot. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my brain thinking, oh, we're on the move away from the desk, so we're tapping. Anyway, obviously that doesn't work. Unless you have one of these. This is the Espresso Display V2, and it does exactly what I wished my other displays would do, and that is turning working on my MacBook Pro into a touchscreen experience. And that is very impressive, considering that Mac OS is not built for touch. I mean, Windows is pretty well optimized for this with the surface line and all that, but for a monitor to get this close to a native touchscreen experience is pretty darn impressive. So let's have a look at this thing. I'll show you what's in the box and some of the accessories it comes with, and then I'll show you some cool use cases for this monitor. By the way, this is not a sponsored review. They're not paying me anything. They did send me this display for free to review for you guys, but I will say whatever I want, and that includes the things I don't like about it. So Espresso sent me three things, their display, the Mount Go, which is their magnetic foldable stand, and the Espresso display pen. What I like about their packaging is that it's very simple and mostly paper. In my opinion, it could have been all paper, but this is a lot better than a lot of other packaging. Inside, we have the display, and the first thing you'll notice is how thin this is, and the fact that it has only two ports, both of them USB-C. There are some small speaker grills at the bottom. Now, don't expect great audio out of those speakers. They do the trick in a pinch, but they're not nearly as good as the internal speakers on the MacBook, so I won't be using the display speakers unless I absolutely have to. The display feels really solid. It's full aluminum and glass, so no plasticky parts, so you can confidently stick this in a bag without having to worry about it bending. Espresso does make a folio case for it, but they didn't send me that. What's up with that, Espresso? So I can't really say much about it, other than it's probably a good idea to use some sort of cover if you plan to take this thing with you. Aside from the display, there's only two things in the box. A polishing cloth, which is good because this thing is a fingerprint magnet, and a USB-C to USB-C cable. As you can see, they didn't waste any paper on stacks and stacks of pointless documentation. Instead, there is a QR code in the box for those people who actually want to read the instructions. Do people actually do that? Let me know in the comments if you read the instructions or you just go in there guns blazing. Right, moving on to the magnetic stand. Fun fact, this little thing actually won the 2021 Red Dot Design Award, which is pretty cool. And inside we have one thing, the stand. It's heavy enough to be planted firmly on a table, but not too heavy, and it folds down very small, so you can easily toss it in a bag and bring it with you. The display snaps on really easily, and the magnets are nice and strong. You can use it in all kinds of different angles, and you can even use the display in portrait mode because it has built-in screen rotation, which I personally really like because that is how I use my secondary display here at home. Leaves us with the espresso pen. This is just a simple stylus with a button that mimics a right click on a mouse, and it charges via USB-C, comes with one extra tip. Very quickly, some specs, because I don't like to dwell on those. 15.6 inch display, full 1080p, so not 4K, 300 nits of brightness, 60 hertz refresh rate, a 16 by nine aspect ratio, and a total weight of 850 grams, which is a little under two pounds. Now, the fact that you can power and run this thing using just a single USB-C to USB-C cable from your MacBook in terms of real world portability cannot be underestimated. 
Many of the portable displays I've used need to be powered externally, which means you're gonna have to bring at least a power brick with you, or even worse, a wall plug, which totally defeats the purpose of a portable display in my opinion. If I wanna work in a coffee shop, the last thing I wanna be doing is scouring the place for a wall outlet and then be chained to it. This setup is nice and easy, plug and play, you connect it to your MacBook and you're ready to go. By the way, this works just as easily with something like a Nintendo Switch or an iPad. I'll get back to that towards the end of the video. I love the way the display looks on the magnetic stand, by the way, it almost looks like a miniature iMac. But then when I wanna use the pen, I can bring it all the way down like this, which is perfect for writing and drawing. And now it kind of reminds me of the Microsoft Surface Studio. I remember how impressed I was when I first saw that thing in stores. I'm not a Windows guy, but that is one good looking device. Anyway, let's see how well this touchscreen actually works. Let me just open one of my favorite note-taking apps, which is Evernote. And this app has a scribble feature I like to use a lot on my iPad. And as you can see, it works really well on the Espresso display as well. And the palm rejection is absolutely perfect. I can just rest my hand on the screen and write without any interference. Honestly, I expected it to be quite laggy or buggy, again, because Mac OS isn't built for touch, but it really does feel smooth. Oh, and when you hold the button on the pen while you tap, it will serve as a right mouse click. Now, my dream has always been to get Final Cut Pro, which is a program I use to edit these videos on the iPad Pro. Unfortunately, that still hasn't happened, but this combo here brings that pretty darn close. I can select clips, drag them onto my timeline, move stuff around, and that is so cool. Now, obviously I couldn't edit an entire video using just a pen. I'll still need a keyboard for text edits and shortcuts, but the fact that this even works just blows my mind. Oh, and like I said earlier, this display works as an external display with your iPad as well. The touch screen doesn't work in that case, but it's still pretty neat to have a large external monitor for your iPad that can be powered by said iPad. It probably won't add much value when I'm working on my iPad Pro, but it's definitely really nice to use as an external gaming monitor when I just bring my iPad mini, you know, when we're on a trip or something. And I could hand it over to my daughter so she can use it with her Nintendo Switch. I think Espresso created a really solid, versatile monitor, which is a little bit on the expensive side. I mean, it starts at $339 for the non-touch 13-inch, up to $499 for the 15-inch touch version, which is the one I showed you today. But it's definitely built like a tank and with a great user experience. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. There's a link in the description if you want to pick one up. If you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.